Moving on now to updates about Hurricane Adelia. Even though the severity of this hurricane has moved from Category 3 to Category 1, the aftermath of the hurricane has resulted in widespread damage and flooding in southeastern and North Carolina. Our next report gets you more on the aftermath of the hurricane that is now near the coast of Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. Take a look. This is the trail of flooding and devastation left behind by Hurricane Idalia before heading for the Atlantic Ocean. The Carolinas witnessed winds at 96 kilometers per hour. But that is far less than what Georgia and Florida faced. Reports say over 300,000 people in the Carolinas, Florida and Georgia were without power. I hear literally my fan go off and I said, okay, the power went out. That could be the worst case scenario. And then I open my door and I see a river outside. Although for a short period of time, Georgia also had to face the wrath of the storm. The state witnessed the hurricane attaining category four intensity. Idalia had residents trapped inside their homes and rescue boats were used for evacuation procedures. Weather experts forecast that southeastern Georgia would receive four to eight inches of rainfall. Isolated areas could even face a foot of rainfall. That was Florida submerged. Over 40,000 power workers were put on standby to help restore power in homes. Uh, so far, there have been 262,000 uh, accounts uh, that had lost power have been restored, and there are more than 250,000 accounts that are currently out of power and in need of restoration. The police have reported no casualties as of now. Although the storm has passed over the state, several Florida counties are still under evacuation orders. Officials say Idalia was the strongest storm to hit Florida in a hundred years. Yep, good thing we had the kayaks. We had to get the truck out of there. It's about to go underwater. So we're just out checking out the neighborhood, seeing if uh, we can do anything to help. Florida residents adapted and took out their own boats after the storm calmed down. Some said it was a good way to pass the time. Others saw it as a means to help other residents. Florida encountered winds of over 200 kilometers per hour. Many homes were wiped out. Officials said the water levels were six feet above normal. This is the current situation in Florida, where the Category 3 hurricane made landfall. People are able to come out and walk on the roads. Along with the rescue officials, volunteers and aid groups are working to help affected communities. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says that the state's primary focus is now on recovery efforts. Accordingly, the search and rescue operations have been ongoing from the moment that the storm passed uh, in the hardest hit areas, and, and they've probably uh, gone through about 70 percent of the areas that they need to to be able uh, to check for people that are in distress. And, um, you know, so far, all, all signs have been positive. Experts say that Idalia is the third hurricane and ninth named storm of this year's Atlantic hurricane season. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says that it predicts that there would be 12 to 17 named storms this year. Climate experts say that as the Earth's climate heats up, storms will start to intensify quickly. Hurricane Idalia stands as an example, a weak tropical storm which became a Category 3 hurricane within 24 hours. Scientists say the unusually warm Atlantic temperatures increased the storm's activity. Will the warming ocean make the Atlantic hurricane season worse? Bureau Report, Vion World is One. Vion World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.